हेलो सर या यश मैम मॉडल बुक हेलो यस सर वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट योर सोन सर या या आई एम आई एम रेडी मैम ओके सर थैंक यू सर Yes, Shaggy, start, sir. Oh yes, ma'am. We can start. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Why? Good afternoon. One and all present here. Here I am Megla, Department of C and E N D D B J N College. to deliver the chief gate address here today is our fifth successful fpp day today i have a pleasure to introduce our chief guest professor j navin kumar associate professor at school of computer science and engineering scope bellu institute of engineering bellu sir today sir is going to present the topic on the optimization of web website visibility and ranking position of journals and publication the uh, many scholars have faced the problem which journal the ranking position of the journals and publications uh, here we are facing many complications over that where we have the papers and what are the valuation and position of the journals so maybe it, uh, it might be a wonderful day for the chief guest to uh, uh, reveal the topic regarding the optimization of website visibility and ranking position uh, we are very eagerly waiting you sir uh, for the session uh, because we have a lot and lot of questions regarding that that uh, uh, website visibility and the po ranking position of journals and pu publications uh, uh, without waiting wasting and waiting for the time I hand over the position uh, session to our chief case professor J Navin Kumar. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Over to J Navin Kumar, sir. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. Thank you for thank the you, warm introduction. Uh, thank hello, you, sir. Hello, everyone. So good afternoon to one and all. Uh, so I take this uh, opportunity, or I, let us say, I, I express my sincere gratitude to. I uh, know the organizing team of this faculty development program and uh, the management officials of DBJ in College Chennai for giving me this opportunity and to you know like uh, share my views on how basically this uh, you know like impact of the journal is understood and how the ranking and positions of journals is are made right and how we can you know increase or enhance our you know uh, uh, publications visibility or journals visibility. so thank you for that so let, let's start with uh, the title of uh, today's session so the title says that evaluating the impact of journal and improving its visibility right so if you, if you see carefully see this topic there are two sets of you know um, kind of uh, titles are here right or let's say sub topics are here so one is with respect to the impact of the journal and another is improving its visibility so when i said journal automatically the journal includes the publications as well right so if there are good publications definitely the impact of that publications is going to increase the impact of the journal itself right so if if you see this particular uh, topic so when we talk about this impact of journals it basically means uh, how valuable the publication of that journal is and how much prestigious the journal itself is right so that is what we are going to understand by the term impact here right if you go to the second part that is improving its visibility so we are we are going to check how basically the journal is referred by others it means how many people are referring to that journal or how many people are citing the publications of that journal 
uh, which which basically in turn will boost the ranking of that journal. So if you see, there are th these two topics are basically interlinked, right? Implicitly, not uh, kind of something which uh, which is totally driven. It's not a complete link, but yes, they are. They have some dependency in such a way where if one increases, the other will also increase, provided the publication qualities are good, right? So let let's start with uh, the agenda. How how I'm going to uh, take forward these two topics in the today's session. So we have the agenda. Like we'll start with the publication process. What is the publication process? What happens in the process? What are the steps that we need to undergo, and how to prepare the manuscript? And what are the basic templates of the manuscript, and how the templates vary? So that will be seen. And uh, next. After seeing the manuscript, then the next step is about deciding on the journals, right? From uh, I mean, on what basis we should decide the journal, where we should be submitting our kind of publications, and uh, what are the metrics and measures that are you know that that will help us to basically select these journals, right? And once we select the journals, we'll be going with the submission process, and then afterwards, post submission, how these journals are you know still ranked, right? Like how these journals publications which get into the journals uh, archives and then how these uh, journals are cited and how these journals publications are referred by other uh, researchers and other scientists and based on that what is the impact that is going to happen on this journal? So we'll be studying about some institutional and author metrics at the same time we'll also study about some techniques whereby a single author or an individual author can enhance its visibility or uh, say that a journal or an institution can enhance its visibility. When I say visibility, it's about how the outreach can be improved, right? So that's that's the total agenda here today. So let's start with the first, that is the publication process. So if you see the publication process, the publication process is, uh, you know, it starts with the research work that the author needs to do or the scientist that uh, he or she needs to do. So once the research is done, I mean, when a problem has been identified and based on the problem, you know, some literature review has been carried out, which will, you know, give you some existing solutions for the problem that you have identified, right? And based on that existing solutions, if you are able to build some new solutions, well and good. If you're not, you may be improving the solution, existing solutions in some or the other way. And based on these improvements, you try to validate that whatever problem that you have addressed or whatever solutions that you have built through whatever approaches that you have addressed that particular problem, how these problems and how these solutions are apt and how these solutions are performing, right? So you try to do a kind of benchmarking performance analysis of that particular solution and you accumulate some set of results, right? So once you get these results, what you need to do is you need to you know kind of document these things right so whatever process that you are carrying out so the process you must be kind of you know uh, documented and you should be ready with the document so that you will be able to you know convert that document into a proper manuscript and whereby you can just go on with a selection of the journal and you can submit it for publication right so once the research performance is completed and once your uh, kind of uh, review is done or a different because we can do uh, the papers in two ways right there are mul multiple ways but the papers can be uh, you know presented whatever research work that you have carried out that can be presented in different ways it can be a kind of letter it can be a kind of review paper it can be a kind of original paper where you have taken care of the uh, research you have done the original research and you got some uh, innovative and uh, you know kind of new outputs right so you are going to present those things so, you know, different types of papers can be written from the research work. Now, if, if you're working on a review paper, the review paper will be mostly, uh, you know, emphasizing on the different state of art which is existing for the given problem and how these uh, solutions or how these problems has been addressed by various people. Have a comparison between all the solutions or all the methods that has been used to address this problem. So, in that way, you can have a review paper. If you have done an original research, you'll be having a original research paper based upon your methodology, based upon the evaluation of your methodology, based upon your results that you have, you know, uh, kind of uh, understood from that particular uh, execution of the test bed or execution of that particular method that you have proposed, right? So once you get all these information, you are ready with this information, 
Now it's time to prepare the manuscript, right? So once you prepare the manuscript, in the manuscript, you will be putting up all these stuffs, right? Whatever the documentation that you have done in your during your research, all these will be converted into a formal language and will be put up in the uh, manuscript. Now, when we, when we are writing a manuscript, we need to have some set of uh, you know template, right? We need to follow some set of templates. So when when we go to the template part, normally different journals, different publishers will have their own template, right? Now we can't use the same template, one publisher's template for other publishers. So we can't do that. So in that sense, what we are going to do is we'll be. I, I've just you know like kind of took some informal titles from the particular. Yeah, okay, so shall I continue? Yeah. So what I've did is I've taken the common you know headings or common titles that exist in all the templates, and from that I've tried to you know kind of uh, you know summarize it here. So what we start with is we start with the methods. Like what, what was the problem, right? So what did you do and why did you do? So what was the problem that you have chosen and why did you choose that problem? You have to validate that problem that you have chosen and you have to prove that that's a problem is a real problem that you are going to solve, right? Once the problem is uh, understood and you have introduced the problem and introduced what you have did to solve the problem, after that, you have to elaborate on how did you do it, right? How the solution was framed and how the solution was applied to that problem and how basically what the steps that you have followed, the procedure that you have followed to solve that problem. So you have to elaborate that procedure in detail. Once you complete with this procedure, then you need to again start with, you know, uh, you know, like what did you find after executing these procedures or these steps, right? So you need to understand whether what you expected and after executing this procedures, what you're getting, whether are they same, right? So if the expectation is matching the real time outcome, if, if that is there, well and good. Then you can go with documenting that particular part. That is what we call it as results, right? So once the results is generated, then you have to discuss on the results, right? So what, what does this all mean? In, in the sense, it says that what is the problem? What is the solution? What are the results? And what is the correlation of all these three things with the real time, right? So that's what you're trying to find and you are going to discuss on the various results, various benchmarking results that you will be doing with this particular thing. So once you complete these set of things, you say that as the main text of your manuscript, right? Whereby you will be focusing on the problem, the solution, the approaches to the solution and the results. When the solution is executed, what kind of results you have got and how these results are, you know, compared to the other existing systems, if there are any, right? So you're trying to benchmark your proposed solution. So once you complete that, then you come to the, the upper part. That is, we have the title, abstract and keywords, right? So now, you decide upon title, abstract, and keywords. So title is the title of your research work. Now, remember, this title, abstract, and keywords are very important aspect of your visibility, right? If title and abstract and keywords are not proper, or if they are a little bit ambiguous, or if they are not covering the important part of your, uh, you know, uh, part of your, say, your research work, then it means that, you know, that, that, paper is not going to have a good visibility or it is not discoverable, right? So that, that's what the major problem is. So many of us, what we do is we have a very raw title, raw abstract and keywords, right? We just put it and we try to uh, see that whether it, uh, the paper gets published and the paper gets the visibility or not. So the visibility actually comes from the keywords that we use in the, you know, these three uh, aspects of a manuscript. So title, abstract, keywords. So we have to do them in a very proper way. So I'll be sharing some tips for that also while we talk about the second part of the second topic of this particular session right and at the end you conclude your work what you did and then you share your acknowledgements that whosoever has helped you in your research whosoever has funded whatever agency has funded your research you acknowledge that and then you add the references so references is the place where you cite the others work which are similar to your work that you have carried out so that's that's the most and again so references section is one which is basically again talks about how the visibility can be improved right so that that's another uh, section that we'll discuss in the later stage so this is what preparing the manuscript uh, you know the titles of, of a manuscript is and further if we go we have this kind of uh, you know the sections right so what what are all the important parts of a manuscript 
So you have figures and tables, you have methods, right? You have to have a proper methods, then you have to have the results. Then you should be definitely having a discussion on the results. How the results were, you know, uh, calculated or if you have a mathematical model, you have to elaborate those mathematical model and uh, compare it with the results of your uh, experiment, right? And once you have those results, from that results, you need to again compare these result and the existing systems result. So you, you need to do a benchmarking of your process as well as the result that you have got from your experiments, right? So your experiments and already existing experiments, what are the basic uh, differences? Whether your experiment was much more better than the existing systems or existing experiments. So you have to compare that, right? So that, that's basically comes under your discussions and benchmarking of your approach. And once everything is done, you write the conclusion. You, you should be having a good introduction to the uh, kind of your whole paper, right? Because the introduction should cover the overall paper, overall research work. And what, why, why is it needed to be doing this research? That also should be covered in your introduction, right? And then you cover the abstract, then the title, then, you know, the proper keywords that should be used for indexing. So this particular point is what I was telling you that, you know, this uh, keyword part, right? So selecting the keywords of for indexing is something which is more important for improving your visibility of your research paper. Right. So that's that's one point which you need to uh, trust on. Right. Then you need to do the acknowledgements and the final is the references. So these are the key elements that you need to cover in any of your research manuscript or review manuscript uh, if whenever you are you know, writing. Right. So we, ha we have done with the two uh, <coughs> phases that is one and two. Right. So now let's jump to the third phase, which is the important and core part of this particular session right so the third phase talks about submission of the manuscript right so how do i decide or how do an author should decide what manuscript and what what was the manuscript and which journal this manuscript should go into and what are the parameters that you know the author should you know think upon so that you know we can we can select the journal and we can send the paper for publication in that journal right so let, let's see what are the parameters that is important. So there are basically uh, three questions that needs to be asked, right? So if, if you see the questions, so let me just go to the slide. Right. <coughs> so these are the fundamental questions, right? So the first question is in which journal to submit the manuscript, right? So that, that's the fundamental question because I have, a, I have done my research. I have my research paper manuscript with me. Now, I'm, I just want to publish this paper. So I can't just randomly select one journal and I can just put the uh, put my manuscript into that journal and you know, start publishing it. I can't do that, right? So first, I need to understand how to look for the journal, right? So the problem comes here is if I want to submit a manuscript, I need to know where should I submit it. So I need to have a procedure to search for that journal, which journal is apt for my particular uh, manuscript. So uh, first, Thing is I need to identify the journal right which journal it is now uh, once I get one journal that's fine but when I do a search I get 10 journals which are relevant to my research work if that's the case then how to choose the journal right so now when I have multidisciplinary journals or any any journal which I'm getting any list of journals that I'm getting and all those journals are very much relevant to my research work then I need to go to the next level that is how to compare these journals and select one of them from the whole list of the journals, right? Where the ranking comes into play. Okay. So first we'll go with step by step. So now let's say that we are ready with our journals, right? I mean, with our manuscript. Now let us go ahead and try to kind of, you know, uh, check how basically, uh, you know, how, which journal or I should target and how many journals are there, which are, you know, relevant to my manuscript, right? So I'll just share some set of links with you. So these links are basically what, uh, you know, uh, which, which basically gives you a kind of automated tools, right? So these journal will, I mean, these uh, portals will basically help you to find the journals depending upon your, uh, you know, relevancy of your document and the journal, right? So before getting into these, just let us see what I'm focusing on right now is these two points I'm focusing on. So if you see, there are two points here. One is journal aim and scope, and another is publication at, you know, uh, I mean, publication of similar works, right? So these two things is the what, I mean, is the point which I'm right now focusing on. So I need to understand 
whether my journal my manuscript or my research paper is apt for that particular uh, research journal or not right so in order to find that i need to know what the journal is emphasizing on whether the journal is interested in publishing my paper i can get to know through its aim and through its scope right so that's what we are looking at right now so now let us see how it basically goes off so let's go to the one of the uh, i'm i'll not be sharing i mean i'll not be visiting all the uh, portals but i'll just try to visit one of the portal and let me just try to understand if we can you know i can i can show you a demo on how to choose a journal for your paper uh, just one second right so I'm, I'm just give me a moment i'll just share my browser here just one second yeah so let me just share this window So the screen is visible. Yeah. So what what I have here is I just need to understand uh, you know uh, these these things. So first is the manuscript title. So I need to enter what title I'm going to keep for my manuscript, the research paper title. So I need to enter my research paper title here, and I need to enter the abstract here. Right? They have given the manuscript text. so it is not necessary that you need to enter all the text here so it's it's basically we go with the introduction part or or we go with the abstract part here so just enter the abstract part here and you can just go on with your selection of your uh, area or domain right so let us say if if someone is working on computer they can go with computer science if someone is on chemistry they can go with chemistry so whatever area that you are working on you can just click on that particular area and you can you can just uh, you know kind of uh, search for the journals right so let let me just take a uh, example so i'll just go to another site which i i normally look for the papers so let let me go to the google scholar now in google scholar let us have some let's i'll just type type business management okay so so i got this particular let, let's say that i got this particular paper i hope it will be opening on yeah so i'm just copy pasting this particular title okay so let me just take this title and i'm just paste, pasting it on manuscript i'm just showing you a sample it is not necessary that the same uh, journal will be suggested in this particular thing because the journal might be different there right the publisher might be different it's a willy publisher so i'm i'm looking in springer here so springer will have its all its publishers whatever publishers are there in springer all those will be there right so let 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 us see what is the result that we are getting for here yeah so i got some set of uh, journals now right so if if you able to see it we have this uh small business economics international entrepreneurship and management journal journal of global entrepreneurship research so all these lists are the journals which are having some relevance with my paper where my abstract and my uh, title was given so based on that and the area relevant to your paper right and if you see the impact factors impact factors are also uh you know for some papers it is quite good but for some papers it is really bad since uh when, when we talk about the impact factors it basically means that these journals are not referred by many people so their visibility might be less or the quality of the journals that i mean 
publications that they are publishing might be not interested in right that might be very low so that that's basically what uh, it means so let us say that this is how we basically go ahead with selecting these journals right so now what you need to do is once you have these set of uh, journals with you what you can do is just note down some four to five journals whatever you are interested in if you want to get into detail of each journal just click on that particular journal it will take you to the you know uh, page of that particular publisher right or that particular journal so go and read about what is the aim and what is the scope right and if the aim and scope whatever you are reading in this particular para right so if this is matching with your manuscript and if there are some a uh, scope that your manuscript can be accepted in this particular journal if it is of good quality then then definitely you can go ahead and uh, you know like further do some research on this particular journal whereby you will be looking for some kind of rankings right so i hope uh, this this small demo might be helpful for you to understand how basically we search for the journals based upon the abstract and the title of our manuscript right so once we do this then we can go ahead with the uh, list of journals once we get the list of journals we can start exploring each and journal in terms of their rankings right so this is basically i have just shown this for one particular uh, you know like uh, portal for journal that is done by the springer similarly if if you see the presentation you will be having it for ieee you will be having it for um, you know elsewhere you will be having it for web of science that is right now they we call it as clarbait right so we have different portals for uh, you know with respect to the journal suggestions so we can we can go with uh, any any one of that uh, uh, journal right uh, just once i'll come back to the presentation is the presentation visible no it's not okay yeah i hope the presentation is visible now yes yes is it yeah okay <clears throat> so now uh, so once we have uh, used these portal right for the journals to be found right which journals we will be looking at so we we got an idea of these are some list, list of the journals that we can use and we can publish our paper into so that we got here right now what we do is we go into each and every journal and we need to check how its impact is how its ranking is so we can't go and check each and every journal let's say i have listed down some 20 journals for me and i want to check which out of the 20 which is the better journal or which is the journal which is having high impact right or which is mostly liked by good you know authors or good researchers or you know like high quality uh, papers right where it gets published out of those journals in which journal the good quality papers are published if i want to understand i need to see the ranking of it right so what is the major thing why we do this ranking okay so ranking is basically done in order to understand whether the journal publications are of good quality or if it is not of good quality right the first and foremost thing is if you have a high rank it means it is of good quality if the journal is having high rank it means the journal has a very high quality publications if the journal is having low rank it is having low quality publications right so that's that's basically what we can identify from the ranking itself right so <clears throat> the second point is the ranking basically helps you to understand the prestige value of those journals right how prestigious the journals are right so whenever we have this rank ranked journals <clears throat> you know it basically helps us to correct and choose the correct journals based upon whether the journal is having high impact factor or low impact factor right so there are various different types of metrics that we need to assess whenever we are assessing this particular uh, you know ranks of a journal so all these metrics are already calculated already derived so we don't need to just you know scratch our head to calculate the metrics so automatically there are different set of portals which will be giving you what are the metrics which metrics needs to be concentrated and what should be the value of the metrics so the value of the metrics is high 
then you should go for that journal. If the value of the matrix is not high for a specific journal, then just ignore the journal and keep on searching for a good journal where you can publish your paper, right? So the ranking of a journal is, is, a, is a very important uh, part when you want to select a journal, right? So ranking is one of the major factor. I'm not saying it's the only factor. I'm saying it's one of the major factor, which basically helps you to select the journals for, you know, publishing the, uh, your, your manuscripts, right? Secondly, you know, uh, since we had this uh, list of publications, which came out uh, with a search using one abstract and one, one of the introduction and uh, abstract and one of the title, right? So I got some near about 20, 30 uh, list of journals. Now I can't go individually and search for which is a good quality journal, which is the bad quality journal. I can't do that. So again, for easy way, what we do is we try to understand the impact factor. We, we try to understand the metrics of each and every uh, journal and we, you know, like kind of use some mathematical model to rank these metrics, right? So normally if you see the type of metrics that the journals uses, right? So there, they are basically of three types. One, they call it as citation metrics, right? The other one, they call it as relative standing or relative position of the journal in that particular domain, in that particular section of area, right? And the third one is what is the general community opinion? Because if you, if you go to Quora or if you go to any, um, you know, like journal sites, there are specific set of comments that you can read, right? So this journal is fake, this journal is a to journal, this journal is of high quality, right? So this journal takes a lot of time to get published, right? So you, you get all those community opinions from, you know, the comments of various journals publications. So that comments is also taken as one of the parameter for evaluating the quality of journals, right? But more of the time, it is only the citation metrics that help us to choose any, you know, which is the best publication that is apt for us or which is the best journal that is good for us to go with, right? For publishing our manuscript, right? Now, when, when we talk about this, this kind of ranking, the important part that comes into us is the access to the information, right? Now, I, I told all these rankings are useful in deciding or all these points that is given on the slide is helpful in deciding your <coughs> journals, right? But how we are going to find all these rankings, right? Where we are going to find this ranking or who is going to give you this set of ranking of all the journals, right? Because again, if, if you see these publishers are not one. So there are many publishers in the world where, you know, on each publishers belong to different, different domains. They have multidisciplinary uh, journals as well. So how we are going to rank it, how we are going to compare it, right? So that, that's, that's a big task, right? So what we are going to do right now is we'll again look at some portals which will be helpful for us to understand how these portals are facilitating uh, the authors or us to select the journals for the manuscripts, for publication, uh, publishing the manuscripts, right? So before getting into that ranking, so let, let's actually try to understand which are the major, you know, kind of journals or platforms that are available for ranking, right? Now, once we understand this, why ranking is important, the, uh, the natural question is, how do I search for this rank? Where do I search for this rank, right? So once we talk about these rankings, so there are basically, there are two classification of the ranking, right? So the classification of rankings goes with one as the government of that particular nation or any apex institutions, they will be specifically mentioning what are the journals that you need to target it for your manuscript, right? Now, when, when we do this, when the government is releasing a list of journals and or uh, if, if the apex institution or your institution is specifically recommending you that these are the list. So these are explicitly mentioned by the government or the institution where we don't need to take, uh, we, we don't need to worry about, right? So we, we can directly kind of, you know, start, uh, you know, uh, select one of the journals, select, uh, check for the aim and scope, check for your manuscript, check the relevance. If it is okay, then you can directly go ahead. But if in, in that case, what is the problem is you are limited with some set of journals only, right? Now, there may be cases where there might be good journals, but you are not able to uh, publish in that particular journal because that journal name is not there in the list of your, uh, you know, journals list that is provided by the institution, right? So what we can do is so that that's that is one way of you know limiting the journals and getting published your manuscripts on that particular 
uh, set of lists of journals, right? Or select any one journal from that list and you publish your paper. That That is one way of doing it, right? The other way is we have something called as indexing companies, right? So we have indexing companies or various platforms which basically try to, you know, uh, collect all this information about all the journals, all the papers that they have published and try to come up with some kind of, you know, ranking, uh, ranking those journals or publications, right? So what they do is they try to, you know, kind of uh, collect these informations in such a way that in each journal, whatever publications has been made, collect the information of that publication, who is the author, who is who published it, what was the date, how many citations has been uh, taken place for that particular journal. So all those information with respect to each and every publication of a given journal is taken. And based upon that, there is an analysis that goes in. And based on that analysis, this indexing companies and uh, the platforms, various platforms like Scopus and Web of Science, all these people basically uh, you know, come up with some ranking uh, of each and every journal, right? So that that's a quite a huge work, but I'll just cut short down to what exactly this uh, classification is. What is this analysis? Is. Now, one of the example for the government part, what I can give is we can have this UGC care, right? So we have a UGC care, which is managed by University Grant Commission and uh, University of Pune, uh, which basically, you know, uh, says that the there are two two sections or two two types of journals that they you know uh, kind of uh, tell us right one is uh, all the journals which are indexed in scopus and web of science would be automatically considered and the second is they have chosen some set of journals which are you know of high quality right so they give us a list of journals which are basically of high quality depending upon their analysis and their process right so we can also publish in those th that list is also can be used and we can use uh, our manuscript, we can compare our manuscript with the aim and scope of their list journals and then we can go ahead with publication, right? We can submit the journal uh, manuscript to that particular journal. So that is also one way, right? So these are the two basic classification of rankings, normally going with indexing companies or going with the government or the apex body, that is the UGC or, you know, ACT that gives you the list of journals. And similarly, any the institutions can also give you the list of journals. At institute level also, we can restrict which journals needs to be, you know, like uh, uh, referred or, you know, targeted at, right? So that, that's basically what the classification of ranking is. Now, both the rankings have their own process, their own approaches, their own techniques to kind of rank the journals, right? So let, let's go with now how, how basically this ranking of, ranking is done. The journal ranking is done by the indexing companies, right? So normally, if you see, there are two major, uh, big, uh, you know, like uh, kind of uh, <coughs> uh, companies, right, or platforms, which basically do this ranking. Okay. So the two biggest and most well known are the, you know, indexing ranking list by one is Web of Science and another is the Scopus, right. So these two produce, you know, like famous citation scores known as impact factor and the site score, right. So these are called as journal metrics that, that is listed on the slides that you're able to see. So Web of Science has four, Scopus has three, Google Scholar has two. So I have limited to very less number of uh, metrics, but there are more number of metrics for uh, journals, right? So again, we I can actually classify these metrics into three again, right? So one is journal metric, one is, one is article metrics, another is the institutional metrics or the author metrics. So I can classify these metrics again into three, but since we are mostly talking on the ranking aspect. So I've just limited to the most important metrics that are used for ranking purpose of the journals. Okay. So each ranking, I mean, uh, I was talking about the measure metric, right? Uh, so <coughs> the journal metrics, basically, you know, they, they help you to understand what is the citation scores, right? What is the impact factor, right? So these journal metrics measure, they help you to compare, they help you to, you know, uh, kind of rank the uh, research journals and whatever the publications that has been done, you can also rank the journals based upon the, uh, sorry, you can also rank the publication based upon some set of metrics. So publication or article level ranking can be done. Journal level ranking can also be done, right? So both are some somewhat related as well, right? So we'll see some of the metrics. So we'll, we'll start with the web of science, right? So the web of science, basically now we call it as a clarivate. So it's an American uh, analytics company. Okay. 
So it, it basically runs the web of science database or I mean indexing database basically. So when I call it as database, it means all the journals, all the papers are indexed into that database, right? So now web of science is actually the second largest in the world, right? For time being, for, for the current state, if I say, yeah, it's, it's, it's the second largest uh, database in the world, right? It, it stores uh, many number of mini papers, many publications details, many journal details of various disciplines, right? So many things are indexed into it. So abstract is indexed, title is indexed, right? So all the informations with respect to all these papers are indexed into uh, the Clarivate, that is the web of science, right? So what they do is they provide uh, two types. One is like academic journal ranking. So uh, academic journal ranking is again, you know, uh, done on various metrics, right? So they have this academic journal ranking. It is basically called as GCR. So which is journal citation reports, okay? Now, next we have... Uh, uh, the ranking of the uh, journals, right? So we have these metrics. So one is the impact factor metrics. So these metrics basically help you to understand how the ranking is done. Okay. So I've just uh, displayed some set of equations, which again, normally talk about the citations, right? So all the equation, if you see, all those are related to citations. So each paper, when, when, uh, when a paper get referred by uh, other paper or an author is referring uh, the other author through his paper, then the the author who got referred becomes uh, he gets one citation, right? So basically, the more the number of citations, the more the impact factor would be. That's that's basically what uh, all the equations uh, says about, right? So citation is one of the most important parameter for journal as well as for your publications as well, right? So impact factor basically it is a journal level citation metric. Uh, so what it indicates is the average number of citations per paper within a journal, right? So uh, whatever uh, it is done, so whatever average that is calculated, that will be calculated for the two years. So if you see the equation, impact factor of 2023, if I want to calculate it, I need to know for that publication, for that area of domain of that publication, what is the citation of all the papers that was published in 2022 and what is the uh, citations of all the papers that was published in 2021. So the whole thing divided by the number of papers that got published in both the years. So that will give me the impact factor for 2023, right? For that particular journal, for that particular area. So if the impact factor is high, it means the journal quality is also high. Okay. So now again, is the second thing is the second metric that we can consider is total citations. So total citations basically discusses about the number of times that a journal has being cited uh, by all the journals, right? So, I mean, for that particular year, how many journals have cited the uh, given journal, let's say. So I've taken a journal as X, right? And how many times the other journals have cited X? If I get the total number of times, I call that as total citations, right? Now, the next is <coughs> citable items. So these are some of the fundamental uh, metrics that I'm explaining here. Right. So we have uh, similar metrics, a lot of number of metrics, which which can be used for ranking. Right. So I can rank it. Base, but normally the journals basically rank their uh, journals on the basis of impact factor only. Right. So we have other metrics as like half life, eigenvectors, normalized vectors, uh, normalized eigenfactors, then uh, article influence score. So all these are some set of, uh, you know, other metrics that we can use. Similarly, when we come to the scopus. Now, Scopus is the largest indexing database in the world, right? Since Web of Science is second, the first one which is, is which has more number of indexing means more number of journal entries into it. So Scopus is the topmost or the largest indexing database uh, and it is basically run by the publisher elsewhere, right? Now, elsewhere and nature has combined together. So all, all the journals that are indexed in Scopus are also ranked according to some set of metrics. So these metrics are also depends upon, you know, kind of citations. For example, if I want to underscore, uh, if, if I want to calculate the site score, right? So the journal level citation metric, uh, it is also a journal level citation metric, but it indicates that what is the average number of citations per paper that is within that particular journal? What is its average number of citations for past three years? So earlier we used to, in Web of Science, it was two years. Here we are, we are going with past three years, right? So there are slight variations in the equations. So definitely when the equations are differing, it is going to give you a new number, right? It is not going to be same numbers. So if the numbers are different, then definitely the rank will also be differing, right? 
<coughs> so similarly we have source normalized impact per paper that is snip and then we have the sjr that is uh, skymago uh, journal rank right so these are some of the metrics these are some of the uh, indicators which basically help us to understand how a journal uh, value is and based upon that those values how the journals can be ranked right so i'll, I'll try to show you quickly how basically the journals are ranked right so we will we'll not go with all the uh, kind of indicators but i'll just try to go with one website uh, skymago whereby i i'll, I'll able to find the basic uh, metrics there itself for a given uh, journal and we'll able to try to understand what what is and how it is and at what position that journal is ranked right so that we'll try to find all right so let me just share you with this particular browser <coughs> uh so is the browser visible oh just this moment i have not shared it yeah so so let's go with skymag so skymago is a journal and country ranking portal okay so which is uh, you know it, it is publicly available to everyone so it includes the journals and country and uh, the you know the country's scientific uh, indicators as well right so we can rank journals as well as we can also rank the countries based upon the various indicators that we have seen in the previous slide right now this 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 whole information this whole portal is developed by the scopus database itself so that that's normally the elsewhere right so they have developed and they are maintaining this particular uh, i mean sorry they have not developed it it is developed by some other research group but uh, the these this data information uh, about the research journals and publications are managed by this scopus and elsewhere so whatever data that you are going to find in this particular sjr in this particular portal the data belongs to scopus right it is it, it is from the elsewhere uh, sites right so whatever journals are there in the elsewhere what all those are indexed in scopus all those journals information you can find here right so what i need to do is i need to get into the journal ranking first so let let me just uh, uh, skip to this so i'll go to journal ranking first i click on the journal rankings right so once i click on the journal rankings i'm going to get a kind of list right so now the ranking can be done based upon h index total documents right for current year or the 2021 two years back three years then again the total references for 2021 then total citations that has happened in the last three years for that particular journal then how many citable documents are there normally the citable documents would be something where which are you know kind of uh, articles or it can be a conference proceedings or it can be any any type of paper right review paper research paper original paper proceeding paper so it can be any 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 entity so that's we we uh, you know call it as citable documents right and how many citations have been per document what are the average citation per document for two years and reference document right so these are basically the kind of metrics that has been uh, given in this particular portal now if i want to search i can directly go and just click on that particular uh, area or if i want to go with all subject areas if multidisciplinary i can go with all right so i can go with some business international management now let's go with if i want all region it's fine for me all types is also okay so let's say 2021 i'm selecting based on 2021 record i'm going to select the rank of my paper so if you see here now you are able to see the ranks here right so sjr is giving sjr is stands for skymago journal ranking right so skymago journal ranking indicator basically is a measure of how well the impact or the influence of that journal is on the whole world right how many uh, uh, researchers or how many scientists are referring to these journals when i say referring to these journals it means how many people are accessing the publications or the manuscript that got published in this particular journal and they are using those information in their own papers right i mean they are citing the publications of this journal in their papers or in their journals right when they are doing it then you get this particular kind of you know impact high impact factor right 
so normally what we consider is you know <clears throat> if the h index is more than uh, say that uh, 30 right normally that particular uh, journal is considered to be of good quality okay so now we are having a good quality journal here so these are some set of journals which are uh, you know referred as uh, good quality journals and they have high impact factor and these are the rankings so rankings can be changed right so if i want to go with h index i can go with h index so if h index is high then definitely the rank is also good right so the sjr goes to 10 here so 10 is the maximum value it means this is the first and uh, first ranking journal so this is the top most journal you can target at right but again you need to check your scope and aim with respect to your paper whether there is a relevance of your paper to this particular journal or not if that is there and if you are satisfied with the rank then yes you can go ahead with and uh, submit your paper there right so this is how basically we try to find the ranking of uh, the journals the position of the journals and if you talk about this q1 q2 right so there are two things here q1 q2 so q1 q2 q3 and q4 these are basically the quartiles right so these quartiles basically help us to understand what is the quality of this particular journals so q1 q2 is normally referred to as top tier and q3 q4 is referred to as you know lower tiers right so q1 q2 always has more impact factor more sgr ranking compared to q3 and q4 so normally if you see everyone asks you to target at q1 and q2 journals because q1 and q2 journals are normally they have higher visibilities right compared to q3 and q4 as well as they have high impact compared to q3 and q4 right so that's that's basically how this positions of uh, journals are found using these set of matrices and now let's let's get into the next part of our topic so i'll just try to wind up as soon as possible because i guess the time is nearly 255 so i'm left with 5 minutes so i can extend by 5 more minutes kartik sir yes sir yes sir i'll, I'll just extend for 5 minutes yes okay yeah thank you uh so yes so coming back to the slides so Yeah. So we are done with this particular metrics. Now these are some of the links where you can find the various rankings of journals, right? So I have shown only Scamago. Uh, you can also go to Google Scholar, go to metrics, click on the metrics, and you can search the ranks of each domain. Within each domain, how many journals are there, and for each journal, what is their rank? That also you can search, right? So whereby you can get. which journal is more apt for you that can be found from that right uh, similarly you can go with clarivate so there is another uh, clarivate's journal ranking portal so you can go with journal indicators there is also another site so these sites basically help you to understand where the journal stands what is the position of the journal among the same domain right so that can be found from these portals now for the continuing with the publication process so if you go back to the second slide we have actually covered till the third third part right so we have done with this particular third step right so we have selected the journal we have uh, found whether the manuscript is relevant to my journal or not right whatever the journal that i have listed at i'll check the ranking of that journal based upon the rank i have selected one journal where i'm going to submit my manuscript right once this is done then the further process goes like this right so you need to go with the blind process so that would be i mean uh, you, once you submit your uh, paper to the publisher or the journal the journal will have uh, you know like kind of blind review will be done whereby the experts will not be knowing whose paper is it uh, it is and based upon that uh, paper quality they will do a rigorous check on the quality of the paper the findings of the paper and based upon that they will come up with uh kind of you know their their own uh, comments on particular paper right they they'll try to write a report referring to the articles relevancy and uh, the rigorous of the research and its potential contributions uh, to the domain or the profession right then these reviewers will independently make recommendations i mean these experts will make recommendations to whether the manuscript should be accepted or not right once the uh, uh, 
comment is received from the editorial board the editorial board of that particular journal will basically decide upon whether to send it to the author for the corrections and if there is a modification they'll send it if it is rejected then they'll send the mail stating that the paper got rejected right so once the modification is sent the author will make the modifications again uh, after the re revision of that particular uh, paper the manuscript will be sent back again to the uh, publisher for further publishing and the paper gets published right so once the paper gets published now what is the case now the paper when when it is getting published then we need to understand the kind of you know its visibility right so i'll directly jump to the visibility part <coughs> so visibility basically we talk about now two questions right so visibility of any paper or visibility of any journal goes with two things right so the first one is how do people find the research published in your journal it means that if you have published a paper how the paper is going to get accessed by all the others who are working in the same domain or who are working in the same field right uh, similarly how do you make sure that the right people find the right articles at the right time because until and unless you don't give the right articles to the right people they are not going to use those articles and they are not going to cite it or they are not going to refer it in their own manuscripts so again there would be very less visibility so to answer these two questions we have one technique called as search engine optimization right normally whenever we want to look for something we go to google we just uh, type some word and we get uh, based upon that query or that words we get some answers right and out of that answers the top five pages will have our solution so they are ranked in such a way that the paper that we get back the results that we get back the pages that we access from google search it's basically the most relevant pages that we are accessing for the query that we have feed it in the same way whatever journals that are getting published they should be optimized in such a way that if someone is looking for some information related to a journal or related to a publication or related to a domain if the papers that are relevant to that domain all those papers should be listed in the results of that particular google search right or any other search engine so normally what we are trying to do is we are trying to optimize this search engine it means that the search engine should give the content that are more relevant to the search query right so now the search engine doesn't do all these things on its own so it has something called as crawlers we call it as spiders or crawlers now these crawlers have the technical technicality or the logic by which they basically try to you know find these papers or find these keywords matching they do some keywords matching between the query and the content of the paper and if there are many keywords that are getting repeated uh, then those papers would be like ranked at the high and the uh, papers would be displayed to the users or the people right who are searching for it now what is the role of a uh, author to have his or her paper visibility high right so for that we have to work in three areas so i have already pointed out one is the area of title right the other is the abstract and the third one is your <coughs> keywords right so basically uh, you know to increase this visibility of the journals you need to have two things one is you have to increase this particular you know uh, keyword selection right so first you need to have a particular keyword selection based on those keywords you need to use these keywords in such a way that these keywords are reflected in a whole paper right so the keyword should be uh, pertaining to your domain whatever you are working on right now when the keyword selection is proper from these keywords you have to select these keywords and use any two keywords in your title right so if you are using any two keywords that you have selected for your research paper i mean let's say you are selecting 10 keywords out of the two keywords are highly important and these two keywords are coming in your title also it means that the title of your manuscript is also having this two keywords then there is a lot of chances that your paper will be brought as top output or top you know like kind of output for the search that has been done relevant to your paper it means that if i'm working on let's say any management paper right and i i have a word called as business management in my title and someone is looking for business man management related papers and if you're searching for business management right now you have keywords you have abstract and you have the title in all these three if you are having 
the keywords that are relevant to the query it or it is reflecting the same words in your query then your paper will be brought as the first result of your search engine by the search engine right so in that way if you want to increase the research of a, a research paper visibility you basically need to work upon these three things keywords title and abstract so once you have these keywords then you can go ahead with working upon your abstract and your title right so this is the basic uh, you know idea of making your research paper visible the same way the general people also do so general people what they do is they allow these crawlers to access their uh, kind of database very frequently and openly right so because the crawler are the ones which is going to uh, take the information from different different journals websites right so the crawler will take all the information but one thing is necessary for these journals what they need to do is they need to manage the information very accurately if some information goes wrong then the wrong papers will be selected or picked for a uh, wrong query right so basically there are two things that journal people do one is having a uh, open access to all their uh, journals and all their publications uh, for the crawlers the second one is they try to get indexed into more and more databases like how we have web of science and scopus google scholar so similarly many many journals what they try to do is they try to add more indexing databases to themselves right so they try to give out their abstracts and titles to get indexed in various databases so that that is the second approach that the journals do right now these two are with respect to journals and the three aspects that i talked about uh, regarding your uh, title regarding your abstract and regarding your <coughs> um, keywords right so these three are basically with respect to the author so these are some of the tips what that whatever i spoke so you know you need to shortlist the key terms from the key terms you need to build your uh, titles and you need to be very peculiar that these keywords are also part of some other research papers which are of high quality so if the keywords are matching then your visibility of your paper will be much more high it will go along with those papers which are already having high visibility right so that that's that's basically what uh, you know with respect to keyword is similarly for you know title from the keyword itself pick your title so create a title in such a way that it is apt it is relevant to your paper and it is part of the keyword is part of the title right so that's that's another way of improving your visibility of your research papers right and the third one is the abstract so abstract should be very concise it should be self contained it should be you know to the point uh, even if you're able to have some keywords within that important keywords within that abstract well and good and when when you write it down write in such a way that you cover the overall paper the gist of the whole paper in that abstract itself i mean gist of your research paper or research manuscript in that abstract itself including the keywords right so if if i say if i want to increase the visibility of my journal or if i want to increase my visibility of the research paper then i need to play with the keywords right so the keywords should be in such a way that the keywords are also there in the journal the keywords are also there in is part of your research manuscript the keyword is also there as a part of query if that is there then definitely the visibility of your uh, research papers can be improved right so that that's basically the second part of your uh, today's topic right so we have done with the positioning of your <coughs> uh, ranking of your journals or position of your journals and as well as the visibility improvement right the other way of improving the visibility is promotions right so what you can do to promote your article like your self article if you are published now what you can do is post it in your social media tag your co authors in social media right and also try to join some you know like uh, uh, sharing networks research sharing networks right you have research gate you have mendley you have google scholar you have divan uh, <coughs> vidwan right so vidwan is also one of the uh, government's uh, link of you know linking the experts throughout the india uh, our nation right so you can join vidwan you can share your uh, kind of research potential there also right so you can create a google scholar profile make it public and let other access your uh, google scholar profile similarly uh, create your author profiles in scopus and web of science make it public others can access it right so that your visibility of your papers gets increased right now you can share your e papers with uh, uh, you know your friends or friends of friends right 
if they want they can they can share their review on their papers even though if it gets published they will give you some idea of future scope so you can you know through that way you can promote your papers right you can ask them to refer the papers in their uh, in their own papers right and uh, you know you, you can also present the research papers in conferences whereby the similar interest people can come together and you can discuss out much more things so there will be more collaborations that can happen in future right so collaboration will again yield you some uh, kind of uh, you know the visibility of your paper right so you know if if you have your own uh, website like you know a self website or web blog try to put all these papers whatever you have published in that web blog and try to make it public so that everyone can review everyone can access that everyone can read it if someone finds it relevant to their research paper they will cite you automatically the visibility increases if the paper is accessible to others at the same time if the visibility is more the citing opportunity gets more right if the citation is again more the publication citation will increase if the publication citation increases the journal ranks will automatically increase right so that is how these things are connected so uh that's it from my side i guess i have taken five more minutes extra so i'll stop it here so if if any queries from your side um ready to answer it so any questions thank you so i thank all the participants uh, for you know their patient listening you know i have been like uh, non stop talking so thank you for patient listening yeah now i'm open to the queries any queries I have lots of things to cover, but you know the time was very less, so I little bit uh, cut short at the things. Uh, but I, I guess uh, still there is no worries. So I I I'll, I hope uh, I'll just give some uh, kind of uh, uh, it's not a kind of thing, but it's it's one of the things. Uh, hello. Yeah, I guess Krishna Vini is having a query. Hello. Uh, there is someone has raised the hand. Ah, uh, so there are three people. Yeah. Ah, uh, Karthik sir, can you? Can you yes, sir. If you have any queries, you can ask. No, there are three. There are three people who have raised their hands. Can you just unmute them? Just unmute. If you have any queries, you can comment in the box. You can comment. Yeah, that is also fine. If I want to see, I can answer it. You can message in the comment box so that we'll answer the query. So in Google Scholar also you you can get some I ten index and H index. So you can explore Google Scholar first with respect to the metrics, and uh, that Google Scholar itself will give you a kind of uh, rankings, right? So uh, everyone can those who are interested in ranking or the positions of ranking. But only one thing with respect to Google Scholar is that you know you are not able to get the actual references or actual citations. Okay, so the actual site because the citations that gets into google scholar is uh, it is also because of some pptts or some browser or some you know websites where the papers get referred right but it is not an actual publication it may not be actual publication the research papers can also be referred in the presentation and that presentation is uploaded in a, a portal right and the portal is open to the crawlers then also the google scholar cites those kind of papers which are not a proper uh, uh, research journals so that's the only thing uh, only problem with google scholar always the remaining part works smooth in google scholar so you can go and explore google scholar 
the metrics part where you will able to find the ranking as well as you will able to find all the details of your uh, you know uh, what what we say the details of your various metrics right for the article or 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 for the uh, uh, say that the journals right so that's yeah i got one question which is uh, what is the h index okay so yeah hi pramila so thank you for the question yeah so uh, h index is basically the you know uh, it's it's a measurement uh, that depends on both the quantity that is the number of publications that has happened and uh, you know also the quality of the uh, publication that is the number of citations of that particular academician right so if 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 i go back to my slide let me let me just show you that uh, slide which has this citation yeah i hope you are able to view this particular h index so you can say that you know if 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 you are publishing a paper for last 10 years and if if out of that uh, 10 years let's say you are having five publications or five journals which is cited five times right so journals equal to the number of journals equal to the number of citations then your h index would be 5 right so that is what is represented in this particular uh, table in the slide that uh, that has been displayed right so i hope uh, the h index is clear to you so it basically covers both right the quality of the paper as well as the quantity of the paper the publication that has been done by that particular author if both are same then that value that you get that becomes your h index okay so thank you sir it is an a very great immense pressure to deliver thank you sir on the support of thanks for this fdp i would like to thank our chief guest dr j navin kumar associate professor school of computer science and engineering vit velur for this informative session then i would like i would like to thank our secretary sir professor in charge sir principal sir hod staff members to make this opportunity i thank all the faculty members participants coordinators for making this fdp a grand success last but not the least i thank you all for your cooperation in making this fdp a, a resounding success thank you sir thank you dr navin kumar sir thank you thank you sir for the session so that we have been aware of the uh, journals selection of journals and visibility and ranking everything so thank you for your session sir thank you thank you very much sir. thank you for the opportunity to the team and uh, the organizing uh, officials right and also the management so thank you very much thank you sir thank you